There's only one road into Key West, but you won't believe where it can take you. Travel back in time to a city rich with history. Discover amazing artists and musicians. Taste seafood fresh off the boat, or just kick back and soak up the island vibe. For more about Key West, visit flakeys.com. Key West, close to perfect, far from normal. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. The Fibber, McGee, and Molly Show. And paper make pens. Bring you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. We'll join Fibber and Molly in just a moment. One of the outstanding characteristics of a democracy is the right of each individual to worship according to his conscience and his beliefs. The churches of America symbolize the belief of many that through community worship, we can gain the moral strength and courage to lead a good life. They symbolize the important role which religion has played in the shaping of our nation. Each day, thousands turn to their religious leaders for personal guidance and for material help. Without religion, many of these people would have nowhere to turn in their hour of need. All of us recognize the important role played during the war by chaplains of all faiths in helping our soldiers to adjust to military life. Thus, it is manifest that religion is an important part of the moral fiber of America. It was the need to worship which drove our forefathers to leave their native lands and come here. Let us not forget the importance of the church in our lives. Let us, through recognition of moral and spiritual hungers, guide ourselves and our families toward a way of life which bespeaks peace and harmony and goodwill toward all men. Mrs. McGee is downtown for some late Christmas shopping. Mr. McGee is at home wrapping a package to mail. Here he is in the living room now, stuffing Excelsior into a box. I'm going to put about a two-foot layer of Excelsior in this box first, before I even put the base in it. Yeah, you said it, Buster. When I do something, I do it right. This is one time Aunt Sarah's Christmas present is going to get there unbusted for a change. Wad up some more newspapers and stuff them in here. Excuse me, Mr. McGee. I, I hate to disturb you. Oh, hi, Wimp. You're not bothering me, boy. Come on in. Well, I heard you conversing, and I didn't want... Oh, me and the bird were just yakking a little, that's all. What's on your mind? Well, uh, Sweetie Face is coming home tomorrow, so I'll move out of your guest bedroom. Yeah, Molly told me the wonderful news this morning, Wimp. Well, that's great, boy. Tickle to death to hear it. Uh, for your sake, of course. Yes. Isn't it wonderful? Well, I wanted to ask you, though, could I take this book to my room and read it tonight? It might give me some ideas on how to handle Sweetie Face. Which book is that, Wimp? The Cane Mutiny. Oh, sure. Help yourself. And good luck with it. Now, uh, let me see. That's about as far as I can go with this box till Molly gets home with some more Excelsior, I guess. My, you're certainly taking pains with that package, Mr. McGee. It must be a valuable gift. Cost 18 bucks. Now, I want to make sure it gets there unbusted. It's one of them Chinese vases with a picture of a mandarin on it for Aunt Sarah. You know, with pigtails and a kimono and a long black mustache. The manor, I mean, not Aunt Sarah. I didn't think you meant her. No, of course not. Aunt Sarah don't have a long black mustache. You can hardly see hers at all. Keeps peroxide on it. Oh. Anyhow, we finally found a vase to take the place of that one that got busted last time we were there, and the butler said dinner is served, and I got up off the sofa too fast. Boy, boy, I'll never forget her expression when that vase hit the floor. 
her expression? Yeah, it was in French. Every time I ask one of them French waiters what it means, they call for the manager. It must be dynamite because... That must be Molly now. She probably forgot her key. I'll let her in, Mr. McGee. I'm going downtown anyhow. Oh, thank you, dearie. I forgot. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wimple. Can I help you with those bundles, Mrs. McGee? Hi, kiddo. Hello, dearie. No, thanks, Mr. Wimple. I'll just dump them here. You leaving? I'm just going downtown to get Sweetie Face's Christmas present. Yes. Oh, watch out for those crowds at the Bon Town. They're murder. Say, what are you going to get Mrs. Wimple? Do you know? Well, I know what she wants, if I can find one. She wrote me a note and told me. She said all she wants for Christmas is a new bullwhip. A bullwhip? Yes. I don't know what she wants with it. No bulls around our house, goodness knows. If that's what she wants, I'll get it. Yeah, you'll get it, all right. <laughs> See you later. So long. Oh, McGee, those downtown crowds are just awful. You step into that bond town, it's like stepping into a whirlpool. Yeah? It's a stampede. Boy. I went in to buy Mabel Toops a slip, you see. Mm -hmm. Well, three times I started for the ladies' lingerie on the second floor, and three times I wind up in the men's socks in the basement. No kidding. Did you ever get the slip? I gave it up. I bought Mabel four pairs of Argyles. <laughs> <laughs> Let her exchange them. Yeah. Did you get me some more Excelsior for this package? I'm stymied here, lad. Right here. Whole sack full. Good. Now, we better get that package mailed as soon as we can, too. Do you want to put the vase in now and cover it with Excelsior? No, no, I want to pad the box some more first. You know how they throw packages around at that post office these days. I'm taking no chances with a delicate thing like that vase. Well, I'll take my coat off and rest a minute. I still haven't got my breath from battling that crowd. Heavenly day! What's the matter? What's the matter? You didn't get your purse snatched. Look at my hat. Oh, what's the matter with it? The brim ain't tore. The fruit's still on it. Looks okay to me. The hat I left here with didn't have a brim. What? It was a little felt cloche with a veil in the back. This is not my hat. <laughs> what difference does it make? Looks swell on you, kiddo. Say, it doesn't look too bad, does it? Oh, come on now. Who are you kidding? <laughs> Stop admiring your new hat and hand me some more Excelsior. I want to get this package packed good and get it down to the post office. <laughs> In case you haven't been reminded enough already, Christmas Day is practically here. Yep, it's creeping up on us like a loose undershirt. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? It's Dang funny, McGee, to a lot of people who haven't finished their Christmas shopping yet. And most of us haven't. Well, take it easy, Tootsie. I'm here to tell everybody not to get excited. If you're shopping late, gift paper mate. Or if you're afraid you've forgotten someone, just go to that store around the corner there and see that handsome selection of paper mate pens in seven different color stylings. You couldn't buy a more practical or wanted gift if you started shopping six months ago. A paper mate pen is something your friends and family will use and appreciate all year. That's right, because paper mate is the pen approved by bankers and school principals. Paper mate pens can't leak, and the ink can't smear or transfer. So stop worrying about things like sizes or styles. Give a gift you know is right. Give a new retractable paper made pen in a free gift box. Only a dollar sixty nine everywhere. If you're shopping late, give paper mate. Well, I hope the post office isn't as crowded as the bomb town. Yeah, me too. Boy, this package is getting real heavy, you know what? Well, that base was only a foot tall. How did we wind up with a package that's three feet square? Careful packing, kiddo. Careful packing. I still don't know why you had to make such a big bundle out of it. I'm taking no chances with that base. I stuffed all the excelsior we had in this box. Well, here we are. I'll open the door for you. Okay. <sighs> I'll be glad when this thing is stamped and on its way to Aunt Sarah. Oh, look, McGee. We hit here just the right time. Place is practically empty. Oh, good. Right over here, sir. I'll take your package. There you are, bud. All wrapped according to postal regulations. Properly sealed and packed as careful as a parachute. Weigh it and stamp it and read me the bad news. Mm, looks like it's tightly packaged all right. Now, let's see. Oh, careful, sir. It has a vase in it. Oh, oh, fragile, huh? <clears throat> oh, it's a vase. Well, have fun, bud. You can't bust it. I packed it myself. Yeah, it looks like a fine, sturdy package, sir. Where does it go? To my Aunt Sarah, sir. It's right there on... McGee, didn't you put her name and address on it? Huh? Oh, my gosh, I overlooked that completely. Here, you can use this crayon if you like. Take it to the table there by the window. Well, thanks, bud. Be right back. It's a good thing you told us about that, Molly. 
This thing might have not got to Aunt Sarah. Post office clerks notice little details like no address theory. <sighs> you got the crayons? Yeah. Let me see. Which side should I put the address on? Which side is up? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you can say that again. Hmm? Give me the crayon. I'll do it. Okay. Mrs. Sarah Driscoll. Sure a lucky break getting here when the joint's empty. We'll be out of here in five minutes and on the way home. But we'll... Hey, what's going on here? Don't crowd the window. Don't crowd the window. What's on there? Well, heavenly days, look at the people. Hey, where'd they all come from? My gosh, if this ain't the... Come on, let's get in line quick. Huh? We'll be here all day. There's ten people in line now. Oh, no, not me, kiddo. I'm not going to the end of that line. I was here first. Not me. No, sir, not me. I take it you're not going to the end of the line. Is that what you're trying to say? No. Darn right. I'll just explain it to these people, that's all. You will, huh? Darn right. Give me that package. Siri, if I were you... Excuse me, bud. Pardon me, sir. I want to talk to the people in this line a minute. Hey, what do you mean? Ladies and gentlemen, I came in here with my wife five minutes ago, and there was no one here. We were first. The clerk asked us to put the name and address on the package on account of I forgot to do it before I got here. Now I got the package ready to mail. Now, if you all kindly step back one pace... I'd like to get back there where I was before, and that's first in line. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you in the name of simple justice to step back one pace. Come on, McGee, stop wasting time. This line is getting longer every minute. All right for you guys, all of you. Dad read a bunch of chiselers. I hope all your packages get busted. Come on, dearie. Boy, just wait till one of that bunch is in line in front of me at the grocery store, and they run over to get a loaf of bread they forgot. See if I ever let them back in line. You just wait, boy. This is a shame. The line is almost to the door, McGee. Where does everyone come from? Ah, they come out of the woodwork. Hey, look, I got an idea. No, let's stand in line. You see that big guy that's almost to the window? The wrestler-looking guy? The second one in line? Yes, I see him. He's as big as a house. Look, you take the package, and I'll go kick him right in the shin and then run. When he starts to chase me, you grab his place, okay? What if he catches you? Yeah. Okay, let's get in line. By George, my congressman. <laughs> glad to get home. What time is it? 3.30. We must have been in that line for three hours. It feels like six. I'm beat. Well, at least we got the package mail to Aunt Sarah. Yeah. And that was the last one. Good. Thank goodness we don't have to go near that post office again during this rush. You don't have to worry about that vase getting there okay either, too, either, Molly. I had that package stuffed with Excelsior. You sure did. I guarantee you, kiddo, no matter how them post office guys boot that box around, they're not going to break that vase. You're absolutely right, You sweetheart. betcha. They'll never break it. Because I packed that vase perfect, right? No, because huh? you left it on the coffee table. Huh? There it sits. You were so busy stuffing Excelsior in the box, you forgot to put the vase in. Oh, I'll have to put that in there. Hibber and Molly will be right back. Three days left. Three days in which to finish up the Christmas shopping. And if you still are worried about what to get Mother for Christmas, you just weren't listening last week when I suggested a radio for your kitchen. The world is at your fingertips when you dial to the NBC radio network. And a radio in the kitchen can make time fly by as the dishes get washed and three meals a day are prepared for the table. You know, the woman of the house spends about three to four hours in her kitchen each and every day of the year. And you know that a radio would really be appreciated there. Tomorrow, for sure, drop into your favorite store and look over the great variety of radios especially made for the kitchen. They come in brightly colored plastics to match your color scheme. And you'll find that the clock radio can be helpful in turning on and off electrical appliances in the kitchen. If you've already bought your wife's present, why not make a radio for the kitchen your present to the entire household this Christmas morning? Your wife and whole family will really appreciate your thoughtfulness. the postcard we got from Uncle Dennis today? Says he may be here for Christmas. Oh, wouldn't that be great. Where is he now? Denver, Colorado. He says, I'm having a wonderful time in Denver. 
Altitude here, one mile above sea level. My goodness, mm -hmm. a mile. That's high, isn't it? Yeah, he probably is. McGee. Good night. Good night, all. And paper mate pens have brought you the Fibber McGee and Molly program transcribed with Bill Thompson as Wallace Wimple and Jan Arvin as the postal clerk. This is John Wald inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber McGee and Molly. Surprise Mom with a kitchen radio for Christmas. She'll love the shows on the NBC radio network. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, guys. It is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere, and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.